name is Elia Burgos. I am the former uh, community outreach coordinator uh, at the Board of Elections. My name is Jessica Cartagena. I uh, work in the capacity of a program manager for the Hispanic Council here at uh, Cuyahoga Community College. Uh, my name is Selena Pagan. Uh, my role here at the Young Latino Network is the executive director. Francis Belliar. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I came here, I believe, when I was 10 years old, about to be 11 years old. Soy a um, Tracy student. Oh, my name is Abraham Israel Tierra Cedeño. I'm from Ecuador. I came here to Tracy to study. My name is Josué de Gramajo Quiñones. My connection to the Latino community here in Cleveland is actually my family's. We have a bakery called Guatarriqueña Bakery more in the Fulton Memphis Plaza. Um, it's a bakery that's half Puerto Rican, half Guatemalan. I'm also I've also been involved with nonprofits like Esperanza. You know, I used to work at the Tri-C Hispanic Council as a Tri-C student myself. You know, it was wonderful seeing students come in every day into the council. So I have connections here and there a little bit. Um, sometimes people say, "Oh, you're a Rosemary like Guatarriqueña." So I'm. Um, you know, here and there. Better known in the community uh, for my role with the Board of Elections. Um, six years ago, I uh, moved to Ohio after Hurricane Maria, um, and I didn't know anyone in the community. So I started reaching out mostly because I was trying to connect with other attorneys, uh, Latino attorneys in the community. I was offered the opportunity to contribute to become uh, the, com the bilingual community I reached at the Board of Elections. Um, advocated for the community to have the bilingual ballot, bilingual voter information, and bilingual poll workers at polling locations. And also a, a, a person at the Board of Elections who was able to provide all this information and participate in the community with educational uh, sessions and classes and that sort of stuff. My connection and definitely the work that I do every day. Um, this program was created over 30 years ago and it really is to serve our uh, Latinx students. We help from everything from enrollment to just general questions to student advising and we provide scholarships. So really proud to be able to do this important job here at Tracy. Here is so peaceful, um, and it has it all. Like it's good jobs. Um, now, 2024, the community is even getting better. Now we're having like more events, yeah. more activities with the community, yeah. like the Hispanic community especially. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know the the Dominican club that you know recently opened. So that's yeah. helped the community even better because yeah. now we're expanding. They're expanding. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff to make the community even better. Yeah. I love being part of this community because I love being able to identify myself with the community. You know, I love being able to go out to different events, um, going or having even people come into the bakery and coming, you know, talking to me. I love being able to like communicate and like talk to everybody and like see similar, you know, circumstances that we grew up in, especially like, you know, being born and raised here. Uh, I think it's very beautiful to embrace that culture here even if I wasn't born in like Puerto Rico or I wasn't born in Guatemala yeah. so like being involved in the community here and knowing that my mother or my father or like you know my family are bringing that culture to here to Cleveland Ohio and just like I don't know embracing that and like immersing myself in that culture is beautiful so I love being a part of it. I think I love that we are so connected um, we are connected um, we we do help each other out um, I think so so many of us are still close to our like home country and we carry so many of those traditions. And I think I love that everyone's, you know, so proud of being Latino and representing their country. The leaders, the organizations, um, they are very involved and they don't give up, um, which is something that when you are long enough in this uh, field, I would reach out to organizations such as Neo Latino Network and so we found a way to get the message via the caravanas and also social media. I think the Latino community, they don't know the power that they have uh, in the numbers. Um, so that's something we, should, we are still struggling, we're still working, um, but it's, it's a, a very united community and, and that's what I love. I think that's why I've been 
here for so long because I found like a home away from home. I didn't, I had no idea that Cleveland had such a, a, a big Latino community and it just gives you a sense of home. I think the impression of voting here in the Latino community is very important. Um, there's a lot of needs in our community that need to be vocalized. There's always this like stigma of like, well, our voice doesn't matter because like is no one's listening to us. There's a language barriers, um, X, Y, and Z. But there are people in government that care. And I believe that if we all were to just vocalize that and like say, listen, this is happening in our community. We need this fixed. If we came together and like said that, change could happen, but it's not going to happen by us just like, you know, talking with, in, with the family and then that's it. Well, the main reason we're important is because their voice is going to be heard, you know? Yeah. Justice can be made, you know, if yeah. they vote and then they can have the, it will make the community even better. You know, by voting, everything is going to be right. Um, I don't think we have still internalized how important it is to vote and what is going on with Puerto Ricans when they move to the United States, because they don't vote. In Puerto Rico, we have a 90% plus voter turnout. I've been trying for the past five, six years, find that um, golden message that will just move them to uh, just go and participate. But in the, the Puerto Rican perspective, which is the one I know the most, we only vote maybe once every four years. And here, you're con constantly um, uh, having elections. And I think they still don't understand that. They only see the presidential, and then they don't understand that the local elections, the, the mayor election, the majoral election, the uh, gubernatorial election, they are as important as the presidential, because those are the people who are affecting you on a day-to-day -day basis. But again, it's a, a cycle, because if I know that my community doesn't, they don't vote, why would I bother investing my time, money, and resources in running if they're not going to back me up? So it's the, it's the vicious cycle, unfortunately. I still think that Latinos feel as visitors to Northeast Ohio, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting, you know. I. I, you know, ask a few of the students or, or people or even within own family members of mine, they don't feel that this is their political, like, environment. They're, they're very, you know, still paying attention to what's happening back home while they're not quite understanding the political climate here in the, in the U.S. So I think there is this realization that our community is now seeing that we really do need to build our political muscle through our, like, through the power of the ballot, right? And so I think people are starting to feel how politics really impacts their everyday lives, and they're being curious. And I think the curiosity is the best part, that people are starting to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. They're looking on the, like, how to find information. And I think there is this urge that our people have to to want to know and want to learn about what is going on. And there's also a lot of frustration because it is not easy to find good information around um, elected officials or public officials running for office or candidates or issues um, and we know that that is intentional <laughs> that is a systemic issue we have here in Ohio and across the country on a personal level I, I was mind blown by the fact that you can register anywhere from where I come from, you have to go to this government office, spend probably your whole afternoon because you have to go during the weekday. So if you're working, you have to take time off from work to go register. Um, and here, I remember six years ago, reach out to her, I talked to her and I got registered right then and there. So 
I register and I've been voting in every single election. Oh man, I have a really fun story about my first time canvassing and our social studies teacher at St. Martin de Porres, Mr. Monahan, took a group of students for Wonder Week to like learn about like what is canvassing and like what how does this work in our system, like how are students getting involved. And that was the first time I ever went canvassing. He took us, St. Martin's is, is in St. Clair Superior, right? So we were going through the neighborhood in St. Clair Superior around St. Martin de Porres High School canvassing. That was my first time getting involved and that got me really excited. You know, after that, my first election and just voting in general, as soon as I turned 18, registered to vote and haven't stopped. I was 18, you know, I had just turned 18 and prior to that I was working with a nonprofit called Ola. Um, they're off in Paintsville and so we had registered voters um, before, you know, that, that big election and everything like that. And I am fortunate enough to vote half of my family. So like my dad had a family, like they unfortunately can't vote um, due to being undocumented. But I think me being able to hear the issues from them and like casting the vote, you know, myself, like, okay, I'm doing this for my family. Like they vocalize certain issues. They can't at the moment. Let me do it for them. So I think that was a big step as to why, you know, I started voting and I started voting and I was like, okay, you know, my family can, but right now I'm the one that can. Cleveland is a powerhouse when we come together and do it and use it for good. I think we really need to understand our power and our leverage to push our county and state officials to fight for more access to the ballot, whether it's language access, whether it's early voting access. Yeah, um, I think something that the city of Cleveland could do to make voting more equitable for the Latino community is informing. I, like I said, I think it's providing the resources because it's not a topic of conversation a lot of the times, you know, and I think that that comes with the reason as, you know, how voting was in other countries, you know, in those Latin countries where now people come here and they're like, well, in my country nothing happened, you know, and stuff like that. So I think it's just like informing and providing those resources to the community like, hey, you know, like your voice here matters. We want to hear from you. We, we need to hear from you because you are at the end of the day, part of our community, part of the United States. If the city made that known, I think that would rise more, you know, awareness towards the issue. Just inform yourself, study, there's multiple resources. And most of all, the ballot isn't our language. I mean, that is something big. We should take advantage of it. My words would be, if you can vote, vote. If you cannot vote, encourage others that can to do so. I, I think, you know, like my mother encouraged me. I think it's really important to just really unite as a community and vote. And don't be afraid to ask questions. As Latinos, sometimes we may get shy in certain environments, but we're really not. Be curious. Ask the questions, like, why are these the conditions that we live in today? Like, I think when we start to be curious, I think it's really healthy for us to start uncovering why things are the way they are. Like, these conditions are here for a reason, and I think the more that we ask the questions, um, and that we ask the questions to our elected officials, to our leaders, the more I think we start to build some more accountability measures and go vote. That's it. Para mí más importante como latino y cada vez con el tiempo las estadísticas lo dicen que somos minoría que va siendo un poco mayoría. ¿Por qué votar? Porque cada vez en los gobiernos electorales o presidenciales no hay representantes hispanos. Un hispano sabe lo que un hispano necesita y cómo venimos a este país y todo lo que las personas sufren para poder cumplir el sueño americano. Una persona que haya nacido aquí, indiferente de su raza, no sabe el sufrimiento que se pasa cuando una persona llega a este país. Ejemplo, no saber la cultura, el idioma, no conocer personas, no tener familia y dejar toda su familia en su país. My words of encouragement for the comunidad is, vayan a votar. Go vote. I mean, 
when you keep on seeing people reaching out to you like, hey, you know, sign up for voting and X, Y, and Z, it's because these people care. There's people that care. And a lot of times we can't stay with that pasado mentality, you know. A lot of times we tend to stay in the past because that's what we got comfortable with and we're afraid to excel because we're afraid of what's next to come. So if we were to just be like, okay, lo que pasó, pasó, like Daddy Yankee said, mm -hmm. you know, we're just gonna keep on going, keep on moving and create a new narrative for ourselves because at the end of the day, that's what voting does. It creates a narrative for the community. Then when it comes to my kids, you know, I'm 22, mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to me growing up and like my, if, you know, eventually I have kids and everything like that, they, they, they're not gonna see voting as a hassle. They're gonna see it as a privilege.